England side. And so the official result in the first Texaco Trophy match, England beat Australia by 95 runs. And Clive Lloyd made his man of the match, Philip de Freitas. No change in the England side. They are as selected in the last match. Philip de Freitas was then the man of the match. It might have been anybody, a fine team effort. And in Australia's side, Tim May comes in, the off spinner, instead of Mike Valletta. Well, the toss was won by David Gower. He elected to bat. And uh, as we join our commentary team, which now includes Alan Knott, we join play with the score eight for no wicket in the fourth over, second ball, Lawson to Gower. Well, he's away again, David Gower. Started brilliantly at Old Trafford. And uh, that was a flashing stroke over the top of Gully. Was a typical Gower effort, short of a length, laid back and really cracked away. Went in the air, just clearing Gully, but uh, going at a tremendous pace. Really, rarely ever see David Gower hit the ball straight or mid-off, mid-on. It's only if he gets really a full toss, it's the ball in that direction. Always he's playing square of the wicket, and that's why the ball goes so quick. He loses the, uses the pace of the ball. And there's four more. Depending on height. Just uh, height of the fielder. Just where uh, second slip would have been. Well, if you're going to flash, flash hard. It was wide and going away, and... Gower gave it the full treatment, got an edge, a genuine edge, but uh, I think it was always pretty safe. It went quite high. And we'll probably have cleared even a second slip in there. That was the one, two balls close in with the... Um, the defensive stroke and then the one to cut but at least as long as you're flashing hard you have a chance of getting away with it but no doubt about David is vulnerable in that area Graham Gooch is taking strike been some big shouts out there to take you through the replay of that uh, here's Ray Ellingworth and in a moment it'll be Jack Bannister well, again a very confident shout ball pitching round about off the stump off the middle and going on and probably umpire Dickie Bird just judging that would just miss that leg stump but a good shout Terry Alderman five overs one maiden over the top and he's out trying to hit over the top Caught at mid-wicket, and I think that says as much for the pace of the pitch as anything else, because on a firmer surface, Graham Gooch would have been able to have cleared the inner ring, but good value there for Alan Border in having maintained seven fielders within the circle, forcing England to try and break out. Yes, a typical Gooch shot, foot onto about off middle, trying to pick it up on the leg side. Again, it's not coming onto the bat, and... If you have about seven men saving one, it's going to be very difficult to punch it through. And you've just as much chance of getting people out caught in the covers or mid-wicket area, trying to drive the ball and just lifting and going four or five feet higher than you have in the slips. New batsman Mike Gatting. Bustles his way to the wicket and... Always looking for a big score, but more so today after that failure up there at Old Trafford. Looks like Steve War now. And he's an integral part of this Australian attack because his medium pace has well, swayed many a game. Very experienced in this sort of cricket. There again, pace of the pitch completely undoing Gower. Stephen Moore here whacking the ball in quite short and the ball not bouncing at all. Ga David Gower there looking to pull and the ball going well under the bat through to the keeper. Again, the ball not carrying to the wicketkeeper. Carl Rackerman 
Tokawa. There we are, going for the, the square cut and instead, well, a fairly streaky four. Oh, Gatting's gone for a big one this time and got it. He'd been tied down, but that was a, a good short-arm jab, really. That's his 2,000 runs also in one-day cricket. Steve Waugh to Gatting. Nicely played there by Mike Gatting. Delicious little shot, that. Left it very late. And I suppose, Alan, you'd say on a pitch that's slow, the, the late cut would be quite a rarity. Well, 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 that kept dreadfully low. And David Gar goes. looks like a slower delivery in fact from Warren in fact there might just been a bit of leg cut there he looks like he rolled the wrist over the ball there we've seen so many times today David looking to play that cut shot having a bit of luck before with the ball hitting the bottom edge running safe but this time luck ran out and the ball ran, goes back there down onto the off stump Alan Lamb again final this time oh well done well he's made amends Jeff Lawson absolutely wonderful stop how they do it I don't know well look at his flannels and it explains part of the trick yes thank you Ode, Tony you've got the big left boot on that one marvelous piece of feeling there by Jeff Lawson miles away from him at the finish but I think he did well not to go over the line as well Bowling change. Tom Moody replacing Carl Rackerman. Oh, that's well bowled by Moody. Now I'm opening the face of the bat here, trying to run it down to through the slip area. You can see the edge of the bat was looking towards the bowler there at the finish of that shot. Two in two. This one coming the other way. Yes, this was a better delivery, a bit of pace and bounce, and man went for it and cleared the back comfortably. I think uh, Tim Moody certainly did down a number of pace there. Moody bowling to Lamb. And there's one of the few authentic cover drives of the morning. Long half volley. Yes, Moody just spoiling what had been a very good over there. Just over pitching, and Alan Lamb very quick onto it. A very powerful player, Alan Lamb. When he hits them, there's no point in running that. Just whistled away to that cover boundary. close but Gatting backing up going immediately frustrated Tom Moody there yes this is always Mike Gatting's call providing he went there's no danger for Arnold Lamb and he was positive it would have been tight if that ball had been flipped onto the stumps in fact could well have been out but those are the chances you take in one day at the front end, Steve War. Oh. 
just about catchable, I'd reckon, but I'll uh, take a second opinion from the wicketkeeper on my left. Mike Gatting, uh, a little bit fortunate there. The ball looks as though it might have just left him there, an edge, and oh, we'll give the wicketkeeper the benefit of the doubt there, I think. It just uh, outside his reach there. In fact, the ball dipped a little bit on him, but uh, another two inches stretch in the arm and a little bit more power in the leg he might just have got there, but Mike Gatting, very fortunate and the ball goes away for another boundary. Jones again. Good running there by the England batsman. Dean Jones, a uh, very fine fielder, and a powerful throw, but the batsman there really running hard to make sure they got in for the two runs. That's one he did get up to the bat. Beat Gatting on the forward stroke. It's not often the batsmen have been brought forward to drive by Tim May, but that one has done the trick. 119 for three now, getting out for 37, and very well bowled by Tim May. You can see here that Gatting here deceived by the Yorker, probably got in the habit of pushing the singles and suddenly a ball's right up there to drive and a little bit slow on the shot so good bowling by May ball going under Mike Gatting's bat there, just hitting the off stump and great disappointment there for England because these two batsmen were playing so well but good bowling by May and Australia will be delighted that they picked up the wicket of Mike Gatting Off the mark for Robin Smith. 120 for three England at the end of May's over. Lamb is 34. Very, very important now with the new bats from coming in that uh, Alan Lamb makes sure that he doesn't get out while Robin Smith is playing himself in. This is Tim May to Robin Smith. Oh. And a chapter of accidents there for Robin Smith, trying to come down to drive. That's excellent bowling from Tim May again. Once more, it was the ball right up to the bat. He bowled Gatting with the ball of very full length. Now he's had Robin Smith out with another ball that brought the batsman forward. You'll see the ball go under the bat to Robin Smith and a very hard take indeed for the keeper there because you judge wicket keeping by the length that the ball is pitched up. Sometimes a batsman can charge down a wicket yet the ball only pitches a foot in front of the pop increase and we'll just see here if we can see how far in fact the ball pitching I suppose two foot in front of the pop increase there. The keeper in fact thinking the ball is going to hit the stump but he'll be very pleased that he picked up the stump in there. Bit of good fortune for Australia but uh, it was always going to be a difficult stump in there. Very fine glance there by Botham, Steve Waterfielder. Botham off the mark. to the end of the 43rd over. Stranded Botham, if that hits, is out, and it's out. Alan Border and Ian Botham run out for eight. And England now 138 for five at the end of the 43rd over. Wicket's vital at this stage of the innings, and here... Alan Lamb sending Ian Botham back. Not sure whether Alan Lamb had in fact called Ian Botham for the run, but Ian Botham well out there. Alan Lamb playing the ball away on the leg side, setting off himself, which must have given Ian Botham the impression he was going. But if both batsmen had gone, I think it would have been very tight anyway. Great bit of fielding by Alan Border there, hitting the stumps direct. 
There we are, England 138 for five and just 12 overs left of their innings. New batsman Derek Pringle. Vital again that Alan Lamb makes sure that he doesn't get out while Derek Pringle's uh, just getting a sight of the ball. So important in one day cricket that the batsman who is in and Alan Lamb at the moment with 41 uh, should stay, stay at the crease. Good shot from Lamb. On the up, his second four, and only the eighth of the innings. It's a good shot by Alan Lamb. Opening the face, no slip. Good save, but still three runs. That's the end of Tim May's spell. And an important one it was. Either side of lunch, bowled as 11 over straight through. And the important wickets of Mike Gatting and Robin Smith in five deliveries. Lawson now to Lamb. swinging into top form another one on the up and suddenly all the difficulties of the pitch seem to be evaporating that's Lamb's 50 70 deliveries and three fours and a cracking shot from Lamb now and this is just what England need Australia have kept them under a run rate of four comfortably throughout the innings, but Lamb now starting to break loose. Yes, Lawson giving him a bit of width there. And the one thing that Alan Lamb does play well is the square cut. And a perfect exhibition of it there. Square man had no chance of getting to that. Worn out of Pringle. Looking for the single, there might be trouble here. Lamb's made it. Umpire Bird got himself into an excellent position there. Well, almost a repeat of the both and run out here. Prindle setting off, Lamb setting off in full stride. And a little bit firmer throw there, and Lamb must have gone. But just making it. thing that Alan Burder will want is good length and line and trying to bang that in halfway down the pitch gave Derek Prindle the perfect chance to play the hook shot. Very slow wicket and not the type of delivery to be ball at this stage of the game. Well, that's a good shot but once again too short and too much room given by Stephen Waugh. Clean hit by Derek Pringle. This is what you want to see Derek Pringle doing, picking the bat up and going through with it. He's six foot six, he's a big man, and if he'd do that more often, rather than trying to nudge the ball around, I think he'd do much better. 13 off the over there, and England now up to 195 for five. A nice strike straight down the ground. Lamb has picked up Alderman, who's come on at the member's end. That's good cricket. They really just play these shots very easy on them. 
minimum of movement and effort and just straight back down over the bowler's head. Once again, he's a lovely striker of the ball. Two hundred up in three hundred and fourteen balls. Beautiful strike, right off the meat of the bat, straight down the ground once again. Well, that was even better struck than the ball before. Long on did see this one, but he had no chance at all of getting to that. He had to go about 10 yards, and this is a slow outfield. Two beautiful strikes there, Brown Lamb, and things are going very much England's way this last few overs. That's just about the shot of the day. Pace down the pitch to Alderman. If anything, gave himself a little bit of room for the stroke as well. And gave it a terrific thump. Yes, this was well short of a length, and Alan Lamb making room just cracked that through extra cover. And we were saying it's a slow outfield, but uh, the deep extra cover man had no chance of getting to that. Really is a powerful player, Alan Lamb. Alan Lamb is on 96 facing all of them. In the air, Dean Jones or Jeff Marsh, but unable to get around to it. But he ate to land. Well, well, I'm trying to get to 100 in one eight, but just got underneath it a little bit there, and the ball went tremendously high, and just finished short of Marsh there at deep midway. Now, Lamb is 98, one ball to go, if it's uh, not a no ball, and they'll go for two, if they possibly can. It's well fielded, they'll go for the second, Lamb will get his 100. Brilliant piece of fielding by David Boone, stopped the four, but doesn't stop Alan Lamb reaching 100, nor England making 226 for five. A great performance after they stumbled in the middle the last three overs, quite brilliant from the two England batsmen, Lamb and Pringle. Lamb's 100 in 104 balls, and he hit nine boundaries. So off the last 10 overs, 83 excellent runs scored by Lamb and by Derek Pringle, who put on 88. But the whole England innings... Well, a reasonable start and a bit of a stumble in the middle when Gatting and Smith and Botham went in a short space of time. 2.26 for five then. Australia may be a little disappointed at the end because they seem to have everything under tight control. But uh, a good example of how it slipped away, just look at the figures of Steve Waugh. Of his first five overs, he conceded nine runs and there the final 11, one for 47. So Australia... They now require 227 runs to win, 4.13 runs per over, and uh, that'll be a tough task, I would guess. Let's join it now in the third over. It's the fourth ball, eight for no wicket, and Foster is bowling to Marsh. He dropped him. Both of them dropped him. Well, that's very unlike Ian Botham. Unusual here to see Ian Botham put down a chance of this uh, hardness. It wasn't a very hard chance at all, really. He went quite slowly, uh, just about in between thigh and knee height, so he'd be disappointed to put that down. Fine shot by Boone. It's four. That's the sort of form he's been in all tour so far. Not a good sign this for England because uh, it might show that the wickets gained a little bit of pace here because that was a marvellous shot. In fact, you'd think a hard wicket shot, hitting the ball just on the rise a little bit there. Marvellous shot through mid-wicket. Jeff Marsh, the anchor man really of this Australian side. And that's a good shot. 
That's him off the mark in the boundary stakes. Here, yeah, Jeff Marsh not having to hit the ball very hard. He's looking to play the ball away, square the wicket on the offside, and a very comfortable shot indeed. And not good for England, I'm afraid, that, because uh, if they can keep playing shots like that and getting boundaries, uh, it's not very good news. David Boone facing Derek Pringle. Oh, it's a good shot. Beautifully timed. Wasn't really a half volley, but it's three runs. Beautiful timing again here from Boone. For youngsters watching, that's the way to play straight. No effort at all in that drive. The ball going back past the bowler. Stroke. Another very fine shot here from Jeff Marsh. Not hit with a great deal of power, but perfect timing. Head and shoulder coming into the shot there. And the ball guided between cover and extra cover with enough power for the ball to get to the boundary quite easily. The pavilion end, Ian Botham, comes on in place of Foster. A competent keeper, Steve Rhodes, had a good match at uh, Old Trafford. That's one of the reasons he's up there. Good leg side taker of the ball. He and Botham have an understanding about the possibility of a stumping. Pringle doesn't like it. Boone does. Pringle's even had a second look. But the umpire Bird didn't bother. Well, there have been a lot of confident shouts today. That's as confident as most of them. Very, very close indeed. Ian Botham, who was the first man to swing the ball here today. None of the Australians got it offline. Neither De Freitas nor Foster. And he swung that one right onto the middle stump. Boone was aiming somewhere away through mid wicket by the look of it. A trifle ambitious. Yes, I'd be disappointed with this stroke. It didn't really swing a lot just did hold but that was about all and boom got completely turned round it right through almost a square leg I think mid wicket to square leg the batsman is Dean Jones well, that's a very good shot they pulled the man in from uh, the deep cover position that was Robin Smith both of them decided that uh, Dean Jones wasn't going to play the cover drive and that was perfect timing. Peel first ball and out. John Embury strikes. What better start for England? 81 for one at T, 81 for two, one ball later. This is the wicket. Jeff Marsh, first ball after T, ball turning back, and no hesitation on the part of umpire Bird, and Marsh on his way quickly. Great strike for England, and Australia now 81 for two. And that brings skipper Alan Border to the wicket. Bowling change, Philip de Freitas coming back for a second spell, and both them having bowled seven of his 11. Good thinking by David Gow, because de Freitas didn't bowl well by his own standards in his first spell. And there's a good shot from Alan Border. Just dismissed that one for four. M. 
Bunbury now to Jones. Here again, Jones making a single and in fact forcing an error which will probably get two more runs. Such so good footwork and goes so far down the wicket that when he's making contact with the ball, he's three or four paces there already. Pressure cricketer here, Dean Jones forcing the ball to mid off there. Derek Pringle under pressure, thinking he might have possibly get run out, but in fact, two runs come from the this field. And that's a great shot. Really is footwork at its best from Dean Jones at the moment. Beautifully balanced here as Dean Jones comes down the wicket, drives the ball away through mid-off there with great power. John Embury now just changing with Gar's permission. Pringle and Lamb in the covers. So we get Alan Lamb going into the target area at mid-off. Pringle going to short extra cover. Oh, and he's bowled him. Well, John Embury strikes again. And Dean Jones, again caught in no man's land. Fine piece of bowling. He's bowled for 29 and Australia now 116 for three. Dean Jones here again, like Jeff Marsh, trying to play the ball away on the leg side. In fact, in the end, he saw the ball go straight on and he, in fact, tried to play it away on the offside. So, good piece of bowling there by John Embry. Dean Jones thinking the ball was going to spin, looking to play it on the leg side at the low, last moment, realised that the ball was going to go straight on and try to change his shot, but it was too late. A vital breakthrough for England there. New batsman, Steve Waugh. I'm sure he would have hoped to have come in at a slightly more comfortable moment, but there's still plenty to be done if Australia are to square this series. Philip De Freitas. Another example here of the uneven bounce coming back into this wicket a little bit. That ball just about carrying to Stephen Rhodes there behind the wicket. Alan Border again a little bit fortunate that he didn't get a faint edge to the keeper, but he survives to continue his innings. There's all sorts of trouble out there at the moment against Philip de Freitas. See this ball from uh, Philip de Freitas here. It looks as though it goes between bat and pad, yes. Very similar delivery, in fact, to the one he got out to Old Trafford, nipping back. But a uh, little bit of bounce there, the ball going over the stumps. Both of them takes over from de Freitas. No fielder out at long on. Now, both of them wants a man out there. Gow's pointing at the other end of the field. Is he going to take him from uh, deep fine leg, I wonder? Well, that's a good shot by Alan Boda. Sort of risk you've got to take now. Always looking for two. Robin Smith is the fielder. And very well done. Kept it low so it wouldn't get up into the area where the keeper would be looking into the sun.
Beautifully bowled, slower ball, and Pringle has claimed the wicket of the Australian captain. That's very cleverly bowled. The change of pace beat him, Border changed his stroke, tried to push it away gently on the offside. And Australia now 153 for four. Yes, Derek Prindle started bowling that slow delivery about a good year ago. I think there's a slight bit of off-spin about it, which slows it down. That certainly went away from Alan Burda and certainly deceived him with the pace. Alan Burda was too early into the shot. See, the bat got through too quickly there, and that was very well bowled. That's the wicket that England wanted badly, and the game really is now wide open again. Tom Moody, uh, Tom Moody is the new batsman and a uh, very strong young player, tall right-hander. It's just missing leg stump, I should think. Well, that's another good shout. There have been a lot of very near ones today on both sides. Yeah, just wandering around, slotting everybody into place. John Embury coming back. Alteration of the field with three out on the leg side boundary for any attempted heroics from Steve War. Oh, instead War getting the room that Embury didn't want to give him. That's the area as an off spinner you don't want to be hit. You've nobody there unless you drop that square man back for the four. Which well, should probably be the right thing to do to Steve Ward, who was a good offside player and particularly strong off the back foot. He'd been looking to make room for himself throughout this over. And there's the big hit, that one. Only the single though to Defratus. pulling in one of his deep fielders into the ring. Moody's gone for the big hit, and it is a big one. Six runs. Well, the fielder was in exactly the right place, the biggest boundary on the ground, but Moody hit it so well it cleared him by a good ten yards. Fine strike. The man that's just come to the wicket, that's beautifully timed. Wasn't it just? And 12 runs already off the over. Two balls still to go. And there's the rate under six for the first time for a long while. That's good play by Moody because the man at mid-wicket had gone back after that six and so just pushing the single. <laughs> Everybody giving that one some air. Oh, there's a run out here. Moody slow to go and must be out. Wall wasn't even thinking of no run at all. Moody was, couldn't see what was going to happen. The calling, such as it was, left him in a terrible way. And, well, six for eight or no, a dive was no good. Well, these things happen in one day. That was always an easy single. Well wide of David Goward, who hasn't got a brilliant hand anyway. But uh, Moody was ball watching. He was watching the ball, and it wasn't his job to watch the ball. He should have accepted Steve Waugh's call there, and there'd have been no problems at all. New batsman Ian Healy. Neil Foster. That might be four, but no, Gucci cross, well saved. Oh, there might be another run out here, and there is. Waugh coming down with Healy having gone on his face, and suddenly 
the game turned around from what looked to be another big blow for England, suddenly turned into success. And well, one day cricket and run out seem to go hand in hand. The Australia, if they don't win this match, can certainly put it on two silly run outs. Slow ball, it's in the air, and it's safe. Lucky to get away with it. Ian Healy's been struggling. Asking for a runner. Ooh. And that might be out. Oh, it is. What a fine catch. The sun wasn't helping him. If he's got any trouble in getting up, his teammates will go and help him. That was a fine catch from Graham Gooch. Well, He's got a long career, but most of it flashed in front of him then. Wasn't oh, giving that a real crack. But he got a little bit under it, and you can see Gooch got too far under it. Had to go back very quickly at the last minute, but he kept his eye right on the ball. In fact, if he missed it, it would probably hit him straight between the eyes. Tim May. Oh. Owen Rhodes has dropped him. Well, the batsman flashing at this. The ball going very quick. And Rhodes had to make a lot of ground. It would have been a good catch if it caught it. It did get to it, but when they're going at that speed, not easy. Three off three. Everyone on the ground riveted. Three fielders either side of the wicket for the single. One hit. There's a run. Defraitis to bowl. Tim May for history or not. He's bowled him. So, two now needed off the last ball. Defraitis did everything that his captain wanted. He bowled it straight, he kept it up. Yes, it's the old maxim, if they miss, you hit. And this is what Philip de Freitas did. Good length, straight on that off stump. The batsman is across the line. And what a finish. Well, 98th team talk. Carl well, Rackerman under instructions now from the one man who didn't give them to him in the dressing room. <laughs> Here we are. And he's missed it. They've gone for the single. He's missed it. Is he in? He's in. The game's a tie. The, the limping Healy made it. Well, what a marvellous day this crowd's had here at Trent Bridge. And, uh, I mean, what farce at the end, the run-outs and the false runners and the exciting tie without bat being laid on the ball at all. By England in many ways, but especially, I think, Derek Pringle, who found his own support here. England 
for the Texaco Trophy. He was the man of the match as appointed by Mike Hendrick, former Derbyshire and England fast bowler.